wrong. If a man told me like, yeah, I'm back in the dating pool. I did just have a girlfriend, but I broke up with her. And I'm like, why? Well, you know, I just wanted to really pursue my own things. And, you know, she was sick with her cancer treatments. And that would be the last date we went on. Unfortunately, if he had to just held on for like a month or two longer, she was going to pass away anyway. Like you didn't have... To break someone's heart that you know is terminally ill, is that cruel to you guys? To me, that is cruel as hell. Like, Welcome to my channel. I'm back with a book review. This book is by Susan Jenkins. It is titled Tribute to a Dead Friend. It is a short story. It's 17 pages. I thoroughly enjoyed this book i enjoyed it because oh my god why does my nose always start itching as soon as i start talking i enjoyed it because it was just for starters it was a good read that's why i enjoyed it i also enjoyed it because i i don't know i've experienced loss i've experienced family members passing i've experienced um friends passing but i've never experienced having to you know, take care of that person's like apartment or house, like after they passed. Um, well, well, kind of sort of once, like when my grandmother had passed when I was like seven, I remember us going and like collecting all of her belongings and like getting things together and stuff. And it is remarkable the things that you come across of your loved ones. Um, and then just the memories that flood in and stuff like everybody handles their loved one passing differently. I know some people, you know, they'll keep that loved one's bedroom together for years. And it's like no one go in that room. That's so and so's room. Like no one sleeps on that bed. That was so and so's bed. And then you have other people that are like, I had to pack it up and put it all, all the way in storage because I didn't want to see it anymore because it was too painful for me. It just all differs depending on the person, depending on the scenario. So this book definitely gave me some introspection now there were some quotes in here that made me feel like <sighs> it made me feel disappointed and it made me hope I hope that this is not how my family members handle the 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 day that comes when I finally pass I really hope that you know if my parents are still around or if my child is still you know I would hope that it would be a close family member that would be like packing up my things and going through my things and deciding what items do they want and stuff. Of course, that is partially what a will is for. But I really would hope that it would be someone that I adored and cared about that took on that role. Like not even just like as a family member as like a husband, but like someone that I'm like, okay, yes. And I think what really threw me off the friend that passes away, her mother, she almost acts as if she's too busy to get to the apartment and to pack up the belongings. So she literally just relies on the friend to take care of it. And I'm just like, mom, why? Like, you're not going to go ahead and take care of it. And the thing is, they knew that the friend was sick for some time. So this book is based originally in Sacramento, in gold mining country. Um, and the main character lives in San Diego. So she says it's a long seven hour drive up to her friend's place through L.A. traffic, San Jose and Silicon Valley. I don't have the money to fly. Um now, she's mentioning that when her friend Julie first passed, well, when she first got ill, her sister was able to help her with her. And then her ex-boyfriend, Brian, helped when he could. After she had surgery, someone had to be there in case she needed to help what in case she needed help walking to the bathroom and to fix her cereal in the morning and soup and crackers for lunch it is so important to develop relationships and friendships along the way i feel like i preach i preach that so much to people because i think we are in this day and age where everyone just Everyone is, so many people are focused on either instant gratification, people are either really focused on their career so much, we as a society are not stopping to smell the coffee and develop relationships enough. And the part of developing relationships, healthy relationships that I think goes like unspoken about, 
those healthy relationships get developed through those uncomfortable times. It's not always when it's a happy vibe or things are going great or we're vibing. A lot of that, you know, that strength of the relationship is developed in those moments where you're kind of sort of inconvenienced by someone else or you're kind of sort of making sacrifices to do something for someone else. That's what helps to develop those relationships where in the event that something happens with you, that's who's sitting beside you when you're sick. That's who's sitting beside you, you know, when you have a loved one that passed away or when you're going through something super challenging. Those friends that you club with and you hang out with, they're probably not going to be there when you're at your deepest moment. Those coworkers that you've spent 60 hours working beside, they're probably not going to be there on days when you haven't gotten out of bed for a week because your parent just passed away. That's just the reality of it. But when you have friends that are... Oh, when you have friends that show up, when you have friends that are willing to bring over coffee or tea or just sit with you, either when you're depressed or when you're sick or when you just need someone there because the silence is deafening. That is something that is that is priceless. That is priceless. Money can buy a lot of things. You cannot pay for someone's genuine love and care. You just you can't. Yeah, absolutely can't. So there were a lot of moments. There was even a part in here where it was talking about how Julie's boyfriend, she was sick with cancer bad. Her boyfriend literally just ups and goes, well, you know, I kind of want to focus on myself. I really kind of want to call this relationship off. Is he allowed to do that as a person? Absolutely. But have you guys seen the like statistics and stories on how many men leave their spouses and wives when the wife is sick versus the statistics of women that leave their husband when the husband's sick? It's not it's not parallel. OK, men leave women when they're sick at astronomical rates. There are so many times where you'll see like the husband will just be, ah, I understand my wife was sick with cancer and I understand the treatments were hard and she started going bald and I just, I felt like I was losing myself. Like what? Bro, no, that is not what, bro, that's not what marriage is about. Like if, if there is a time I'm going to be there, it's going to be through sickness. It's going to be through sickness. Like, even if I feel like, oh, my God, I can't stand my partner, I'm not going to leave while you're sick. Like, I'm not I'm not going to do that. But this this Julie's ex-boyfriend, Brian, just wasn't built that way. And unfortunately, unfortunately, if he had it just held on for like a month or two longer, she was going to pass away anyway. Like, you didn't have to break someone's heart that you know is terminally ill. Is that cruel to you guys? To me, that is cruel as hell. Like, breaking someone's heart is bad enough, but to do it and you know they're on their deathbed is insane to me. Like, I don't know. If a man told me, like, yeah, I'm back in the dating pool. I did just have a girlfriend, but I broke up with her. And I'm like, why? Well, you know, I just wanted to really pursue my own things. And, you know, she was sick with her cancer treatments. And that would be the last date we went on. I would never go on a date with him again, ever, ever again. I literally would probably at that point definitely offer like, yes, let's go half on the bill. I have no intentions. I would never, I would never see that man again. Once I start offering to go half on the, on the bill on the first date, baby, you will never see me again. You'll never. That is my signature. Thank you for your time, but this will never occur again. Okay, so Julie's mother's name is Marlene, and Marlene basically texts the friend, and she's like, hey, can you pack up these things of Julie's? Can you pack up her apartment? The movers will be there tomorrow, whatever. The friend takes it on, and there is a quote in here, you guys. It says, the value of a person to another is definitely measured by the loss of their life. I didn't realize how much Julie meant to me until the day she died. I can resonate with that so much. I feel like you know that you love a person. You know you care about a person. Like you absolutely, you know. But it is, 
many times it is not until that person is either gone because they've passed or they're gone because the relationship is over or they're gone because they've moved away that you really realize like you were my rock like you meant a lot to me and sometimes life gets the life thing and we get so busy and stuff that we don't realize like you never know when that's the last time you spend time with someone you never know if that's gonna be the last time you lay eyes on someone this was a very good book if you have not already go ahead and hit the subscribe button i loved this book this will not be my last time reading a book by this author i'm pretty sure i just found the book by skimming through what books were free in the top 100 category of whatever genre i was skimming in that day or whatever because i'm trying out a bunch of authors that i have not tried out this year the goal is to definitely read a collection of short stories novellas manga books manga books however i say it i know you guys are going to get on me i'm reading a collection of books and the goal is to hit 150 books before this year is over because i just feel like there's so many there's so many amazing authors out there that i haven't gotten a chance to experience yet and my to be read list is longer than the Nile River at this point. But, you know, that's a part of reading. I don't think we'll ever truly read every single book on our to be read list. There'll always be that book on your bookshelf when you pass away that you didn't get to. So, I don't know. On another note, my favorite ex is free. It's free. Okay. My favorite ex is free still on Amazon and with Barnes and Nobles. I'm not sure how much longer. I'm going to keep that book for free. But it's basically just my thank you to my, um, you know, my supporters and the people that have supported me. I have cracked 300 subscribers on YouTube. Super, super excited. When I'm looking at my Amazon followers um, for my French Alls Brooks Brooks, I am almost at 200 followers on there. And that is a lot for me. Okay. That's a lot for me. And you want to know why that's a lot for me? Because I am a self published author. So any amount of followers is amazing for me. This book here that I am wearing on my shirt, Remorseful. I am just blown away by the support this book has received. I'm really blown away. I appreciate every little kind comment, like, share, inbox that I get. I'm not one of those authors that feel like don't inbox me or don't bother me. Inbox me and tell me that you loved or hated my book. Leave a review on Amazon and say, this was the worst book ever. This was the best book ever. There's a comment right here that someone left telling me how trash my book was. I is, I'm okay with that. I am okay with that. So don't shy away from telling me that you feel like my book was ass. You can tell me it is perfectly fine. So I look forward to seeing you in the next book review. Bye.